Okay guys, so we are starting on a new unit and we have a new video lesson to start this unit. So this unit is all about matter and we're gonna start by talking about the properties of matter, these characteristics of matter. So, um, and these are important because they really kind of dictate how matter is going to behave. Um, so to the left, you've got two different um, samples of matter and they are pure substances. Actually, these are two different elements. The one at the top, you might guess, is a metal and it is specifically sodium, okay? Sodium, which is Na, is number 11, atomic number 11 on the periodic table. And then down below it is sulfur, which is actually a non-metal and it might even look like it's a non-metal to you and that's because it is not. And chemical symbol S and atomic number 16 on the periodic table. Um, now, so these two substances look very different and they are very different. Um, just knowing based on our last unit that sodium um, is number 11 and its location on the table, some things that we can say about sodium is that it is a solid at room temperature and we can even see that. Um, we know that it is a metal. For sulfur, we can say that based on its location on the table, that it is a um, non-metal. It is a solid at room temperature as well and we can see that on the table. We can also see this in, see that in this image. It is a non-metal, okay? Now, um, so these are already some properties of both of these chemicals that we know just based on their placement on the periodic table. Now, some other things that we could say about these substances is that the sodium um, is a gray, um, grayish kind of silver color. Um, you might say that it's kind of shiny. Um, and if you can tell, um, it almost looks buttery and that's because sodium is actually a very soft metal and it lo looks that way as you can see the individual that's actually slicing off a piece of sodium from the larger sample. Now, when we look at the uh, sulfur, we can see that um, obviously it's a totally different color. It is yellowish looking. Um, and it is crushed up. So it looks like it might be a little more hard, but it also looks like it is um, brittle. That is that it breaks into pieces really easily. All right, so these are things that I am able to say about these substances simply by looking at them, okay? Um, now, these are just observable. Now, there are other things that we can, um, other characteristics or properties of these two samples that we can do, but we might have to go a little bit further. So if you notice, all of the things that I have listed are physical properties, okay? So all of these properties of sodium and all of these properties properties of sulfur are physical and if a property is physical that simply means that it is observable or measurable okay so these are actually observable all right some measurable things that um, I could do with instruments or tools would be I could determine the mass of both of these substances I could figure out um, the uh, density of these substances I could um, use a thermometer and try to figure out a temperature just based on uh, uh, with um, touching the thumb thermometer to into the substance. Um, I could figure out temperature. Um, I could also um, have a certain volume of the substance. All right, so I'm not going to continue to write these things down because y'all kind of get the picture. These are all physical, meaning that they are observable or measurable. Now, Something that um, the other type of properties that are not quite as obvious, that is they are not observable or measurable, are known as chemical properties, okay? So chemical properties, if, if you think back to something we talked about when we were going over um, lab safety, is if you do recall these diamonds that we looked at, the NFPA diamonds, where um, you had... Uh, one of these right here stood for um, health and then there's flammability and then there was reactivity levels. So these these diamonds that we talked about, the NFA, NF, NAFP, excuse me, diamonds, were basically telling us about the chemical properties 
of the substances, okay? So chemical properties are things like flammability, um, corrosiveness, reactivity levels, like how it reacts with um, a an acid or a base or with water okay so all of these things are known as chemical properties and the thing about chemical properties is that you cannot see them or observe them or measure them without chemically transforming the substance so if we wanted to see if the sodium was flammable and it, uh, we would damage it chemically and actually chemically transform the sodium and or the sulfur to something else, okay? So there are physical and then there are chemical properties. Chemical properties are not observable or measurable, but actually require chemical reaction to observe these properties. All right, the next thing we're going to look at is just this flow chart. And this is the last image we're going to look at, but it kind of breaks the idea of what properties of matter, how you can, um, how you can separate them and kind of define them even further. So we're going to talk about these in just a second. These are extensive and intensive. Guess what? Most of my students have never heard of these, and I'm going to be happy to tell you about them and practice with them in class um, as well. All right, so here are the chemical and physical properties that I was just telling you about. You can see chemical properties, a property that becomes evident during a chemical reaction. So just like I told you, these kind of things, you can't observe or measure. They are not a physical. The reason they are chemical is because it's how, I mean, it's in the name. It's how matter chemically um, behaves with other things. Or So flammability and reactivity, corrosiveness, if it oxidizes or is an oxidizer, those are all things just like we saw in the lab that magnesium or manganese oxide rather was an oxidizer. That is, it gives um, substances the ability to become flammable. We wouldn't know that unless we actually performed a chemical reaction with it. So that would be a chemical property of manganese oxide, all right? But physical and chemical properties can be measured or observed, okay? So um, the things that measured, such as mass, density, volume, temperature, and then things that are observed would be things like the color, um, the smell, um, it's how uh, malleable it is, that is, can it be flattened into thin sheets, is it brittle, is it hard, okay, those are physical properties. Now, physical properties can be further categorized into what are known as intensive and extensive properties. So I want to be just as clear as I can be about what an intensive and extensive property is. Intensive, so we're going to start right here with an intensive property, all right? Intensive properties can be used to help identify a substance because it does not change with the amount of matter present. So, for instance, it doesn't matter if you have a piece of paper towel or a whole sheet or a whole roll of paper towels, they are still going to be white, okay? Now, the melting point or the, uh, or, uh, the melting point or the freezing point or the boiling point of something is not going to change based on how much you have. Now, let's say you have a cup of water. One, whether you have a cup of water or you have a gallon of water, obviously a gallon is more than a cup, but guess what? They both boil at 100 degrees Celsius, okay? It might take longer to get this whole gallon to 100 degrees Celsius, but it still boils at 100 degrees Celsius just like one cup. So these are the things, these are the, the uh, properties, the physical properties, because both of these are physical, they're not chemical, color and melting point. They do not change based on how much you have. They are consistent and always the same. Now, extensive physical properties cannot be used to help identify substance because they're not always consistent, okay? So, for instance, that paper towel I was telling you about, if I had a little bitty piece of paper towel like this big versus a whole uh, sheet of a paper towel, guess what? They weigh different. They also have different volumes, okay? One takes up more space than the other, okay? One weighs more than the other, okay? So extensive physical properties are those that 
change based on the amount that you have. Not only that, but if you are going to burn both of these, there is more stored potential energy in PE, potential energy, inside this paper towel versus this one, okay? So energy, um, the amount of energy or potential energy that matter has is also extensive. So it varies based on how much you have. But these things right here do not. So I like to tell students that intensive means it's in. It is a it is something that was it is a property a physical property that is within matter that does not change based on how much you have but extensive properties they are those physical properties that can vary based on how much you have all right so we are going to practice with these tomorrow um, so be prepared for a mini quiz that will be um, over this uh, video